Great. Hey, folks. Um, thanks for joining us for the latest OSS sync. Um, we can go ahead and get started. I think it's a little bit five past the hour now, and hopefully folks are pulling in or have already joined the meeting. Great. So, um, hey, George, can you hear me okay? <laughs> All right. Also, thanks for converting. Great. So for um, today's sync, uh, we'll go over a few community highlights, uh, upcoming roadmap, um, and then uh, we'll have a demo from folks over at Spotify. Um, so some of the things that have been brewing in the flight community over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I don't know if everyone saw, um, but we officially announced Union AI coming out of Stealth. Um, and I think Caitlin maybe had a few words he wanted to add for what this means for the flight open source community um, and how we're hoping to kind of use that partnership between Union uh, to improve uh, flight OSS. I don't know, Caitlin, if you had a few words. Hey, hey, Katrina, I think I'll go in a little bit. Can you just continue? Uh, I'm driving today. Sorry. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we will remove this then. Um, but I guess uh, the summary is though, um, you know, we hope to kind of basically massively kind of, you know, uh, contribute to the open source community still. Um, nothing is really changing. We just want to use the power of the flight community. Uh, great. And then uh, upcoming community events. Um, so uh, Niels and Hayden will be speaking at the FLOPS community sync tomorrow. Uh, they'll be talking about what they learned building end to end uh, machine learning applications on flight. And the winners of the Hackathon will also be announced there as well. So we highly encourage everyone to join. The meeting will be at the same time uh, just tomorrow. Register at the bit.ly link on the slides below. Um, as always, office hours are on Wednesdays, uh, 7 a.m. with Kathan, uh, 9 p.m. with Kathan. Um, come if you want to hang out. If you have any specific questions or if there's anything you want to chat about flight or ML ops in general, um, everyone's always welcome. No sign up or anything required whatsoever. Uh, and then, uh, as a reminder, we have our sync again in two weeks. Uh, and this time, we'll be chatting a bit about Hunting Man, which is an exciting new uh, hub play kit. And we will also be demoing uh, Pipe Flight Run as well. Um, and uh, we mentioned this at the last sync, but uh, we're working hard on uh, releasing Flight 1.0, um, and that should be imminent. Um, and some of the new features that you can look forward to in the 1.0 release are flight signal binary, uh, which will improve the speed and ease with which you can set up your entire flight back in deployment and make it really easy to contribute to flight as well too and test out your contributions. Um, and it takes a minute, minute and a half to set up. So we're really excited uh, to kind of improve the good and start experience with signal binary. Uh, 1.0 will also include script work, uh, which is a single plan in high flight. Uh, which you can use to register and run your workflows whenever you don't necessarily need to rebuild your image. Um, this kind of takes out a lot of mumbling with the pipeline serialize and like to register. It'll just be like, one single command um, and it's super slick and easy to use. Um, on top of that, we have a lot of UI improvements that will be bundled in this release. Uh, this includes project dashboard with an overview of all your project level settings, recent executions. Um, on top of that, improved math test reporting and dynamic test rendering as well too. So a lot to look forward to. And like we said, uh, we're hoping we're hoping on getting this release up very, very soon. Um, and just a preview of what exactly uh, is in that release. So I mentioned this pipeline kind of script mode. Um, so uh, not a particularly thrilling screenshot, but we'll have a more elaborate demo in the next couple of weeks. Um, as you can see here, you have this one pipeline run command. It's all you need in order to run any workflow and define anywhere within your, uh, your code base. You can run it remote, um, which we'll show you here. You can see this will render a um, console link where you can go check out your execution. You can also run your workflows uh, directly uh, just by calling the Python the workflow function. Um, and you can also uh, you Oh, hey, Kathan is here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it comes fully uh, out, loaded out of the box with support for um, inputs, uh, discovering workflows. Um, it's kind of one command line to rule them all. Uh, since given is here, let's revisit the, the Union AI um, oh. announcement. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Um, I think, firstly, I wrote this in Slack and I'm, I completely leave this up. We wouldn't have been here without the community. I think uh, all of you folks are just wonderful. I'm more than happy every day to work on a product that I've, you know, we started, but I really 
want to take to you know where we think it can go to uh, but most importantly work with all of you folks and you know to make sure that the vision is achieved which is amazing uh thank you for you know we started this community think about a little, little less than two years ago uh, initially it used to be like four or first or something used to join in and slowly slowly like last last a couple of weeks ago we were about 55 or 60. Um, that shows that you know we are growing as a community uh, again that 60 is not a representative of all the users which is just amazing so i am i am actually humbled uh, to be here and uh, what the funding really means is uh, Union AI uh, is the company we started, which has been, if you have noticed, has been contributing heavily to Flight. We will continue doing that. Um, yes, we are working on a, a commercial version, but uh, I would highly recommend that you guys read a blog that I wrote about Union.ai. Uh, the reason for us to start Union.ai is essentially to make, uh, you know, one to help promote flight as an open source product just uh, get many many users to know the, you know the problems that they get solved with it and how to use it and wherever possible uh, help them uh, get along the way but also in, there are some cases in which we found uh, over the last couple of years is that there are teams that do not have big infrastructure teams as they're uh, supporting uh, them and so we want these teams also to get advantages from flight and as well as you know get onboarded very quickly. That's one of the reasons why we started uh, Union AI, uh, the commercial offering, where the goal is that we become the infrastructure partners for teams that do not have them. Um, and I think together with the open source community and Union AI uh, partnerships, we can have more users using flight. And the reason for having more users using flight is essentially every user that comes onto the platform has so many amazing inputs, which actually improves the platform overall for everybody else. And that's why I think a large community is, is uh, a fantastic goal that we want to have. Um, and uh, more uh, uh, because of Union AI's funding, we are of course accelerating more on areas that we really need improvement, like for example, uh, we would be helping people with, uh, like, helping with the Java and Scala SDK that Spotify folks have been driving completely on their own. Uh, we we have we have large investments in the UI, uh, which actually we are also we are working with Stripeworks and the Spotify folks for you know, unbundling the UI in a way that people can embed it within their own uh, user experiences, which, which you know, further makes um uh you know it, it, it's possible for users to deliver the experience that they want with flight because again the goal of flight is not to be a center but be the supporting actor uh, in whatever platform you are you know trying to build and yeah so uh and and, and it also helps us to hire more engineers to work on a lot of backend features that we have wanted to hire help work on uh and Flight 1.0 release today is just one step in that milestone. Again, there is no breaking changes. Uh, we uh, we are just creating a 1.0 to signify that we are confident about the APIs, uh, and we are further going to invest in the internals. So, 1.0 yeah. also doesn't mean the feature complete. We just mean that we think we are stable that everybody can use us in production, but we will keep on improving the entire system. Uh, I also wanted to bring up two other important points. Last week, we had a, a, a security vulnerability uh, that we discovered and we uh, we had a very quick turnaround from the Unity AI team. Uh, and thank you for everybody to jump on and help with it. Uh, we've tried to communicate with everybody within that we knew of uh, but of course, there are many, many other users that we don't know of uh, directly. So if you're using Flight Console, what we did is we yanked older versions of Flight Console. Please upgrade your version of Flight Console. Uh, I cannot explain all the details of the security vulnerability because of the embargo at the moment. 
but uh, we have a CVE in progress and we will be publishing that once we have a confirmation from most users that they have upgraded. About, uh, for, for folks that I reached out, most of them have upgraded and it's, it's been fine for them. Um, yeah, and, and another uh, point about office hours uh, that we actually were talking yesterday. We do an office hours in the morning and in the evening on Wednesdays, that's tomorrow. If you're thinking of doing one in the US hours in the afternoon, please recommend times um, and that would be wonderful. So that's it for my end. And thank you again for joining. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Okay, so I just wrapped up the preview of Pipelight script nodes. We'll be talking more about that in uh, the next upcoming open source sync. I'll have a full demo there. Um, and that wraps up all the updates for today. So I'll hand it over to Nelson and Thomas. We'll talk about um, how we're doing uh, Pipelight at Spotify.